In this video, I want to continue to talk about the previous example of individuals coming from a tribe in the Amazon rainforest. And what I want to do is I want to use it as a means to sort of talk about the fact that we can actually, for sort of intuitive purposes, we can forget about the denominator, which is why I've called this video forgetting about the denominator of the Bayesian formula. And it's not purely for intuition. There's also another reason for doing this, which is that essentially a lot of Bayesian methods or computational Bayesian methods are based around the fact that the denominator is the same for all values of our parameter theta across the distribution and we can use that to forget about the denominator essentially or we can use that particular aspect to sort of derive methods which aren't dependent on the denominator. Okay so let's write out how we got to each of these posterior probabilities in full. The first one is the probability that theta is equal to 1 given our data and also given our model choice. We know that this is equal to the likelihood, which is the probability of our data, given that theta is equal to 1 and given our model choice, times our prior probability, which is the probability which we assigned to theta being equal to 1, given our choice of model, divided through by the probability of our data given our choice of model, which note that this denominator here doesn't depend on theta. Then for the second one, the probability that theta is equal to zero given our data and given our choice of model, it's going to look very similar. The numerator here is going to be the likelihood, which is now slightly different, is the probability of our data given that theta is equal to zero and given our model choice times the probability that theta is equal to zero, given our model choice, all divided through by the probability of our data, given our choice of model. And just to be clear, this is given, not a comma there, in the above example as well. And note that whilst the numerators between these two expressions are not the same, the denominators here are identical. So what does that tell us? Well, it kind of tells us here that because each of these cases has the same denominator, if we wanted to get a feel as to what the ratio of these two probabilities would be, then you can imagine that these two denominator terms here are just going to cancel one another out. And that's actually a way of deriving something which we're going to talk about in the future, which is known as the Bayes factor. But what I want to say here is that essentially we can regard this denominator as being fixed because, well, it doesn't depend on theta. So no matter what value of theta we choose, this denominator here is fixed, which means that in this particular circumstance, and in any circumstance, the posterior probability of theta, given our data and given our model choice, is proportional to the likelihood, so the probability of our data, given our value of theta, and given our model choice times the prior, which is the probability of theta given our model choice. So just to be clear, this first term here is the likelihood, and the second term here, if I can just spell likelihood correctly, the second term here is the prior. And what we can do is we can use this fact to help us to sort of intuitively think about how we arrived at both of these posterior probabilities in the next video in quite a graphical way. And as I said before, this is the basis behind a lot of computational Bayes methods. So for example, Metropolis Hastings is an algorithm which is based on the fact that you can kind of regard this denominator as being fixed across different values of theta.